Okay, so OpenAI have made some updates to their coding agent, Codex, and what we can now do is use Codex directly in our IDE. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can set it up in your IDE, and then we'll test Codex. So we'll give it some tasks to do, and we'll see how it performs. There's different models and modes that you can choose from when you're using Codex. So I'll go in depth into what each of those models and modes does and, and when it's best to use each one. So at the end of this video, you'll have a really good idea of how Codex works and how you can leverage the different options to assist with your coding and development needs within Cursor. Okay, so first we just want to go to chatgpt.com forward slash Codex. And then we can see here, try in your EDE is an option. If we click on that, we can see Cursor. I'm going to use Cursor for this example. So if we click on that, it will then open up the Codex window in our Cursor IDE, as we can see here. And then we can see here there's an option to install Codex. So we'll click on that. Okay, so Codex is installed now. So now what we want to do is do Control Shift P to open our command palette. Uh, then we want to type in Codex. That's going to come up with all the Codex options. And for this, we want to open Codex. It's going to then open Codex on the left-hand side here in our sidebar. And we then will need to sign in with ChatGPT in order to initiate a Codex session here on the left. Okay, so we followed the prompts and logged into Codex. And we can see here now that it has initiated in Cursor. Um, so we can see here, Codex navigates, edits, runs commands, and executes tests directly in your repo, powered by your ChatGPT account. So we'll click Next, hand off to Codex in the cloud, send tasks to Codex to run in the background so you can stay focused and move faster. Uh, we can see we can turn to-dos into Codex tasks, so write a to-do comment and convert it into a Codex task with a single click. Uh, there's more information here on how much autonomy we want to grant Codex. And then a warning, it can make mistakes. So be sure to review the code it writes and the commands it runs before you accept. Um, and again, powered by our ChatGPT account. So we can see here we're now logged in. We've got the chat window here. Um, we can see down the bottom here it is using the GPT-5 Codex model. Um, you can set it to low, medium and high. And then we've got GPT-5 with the settings you can choose there. Obviously, we want to use the Codex uh, model here. We'll stick with medium for now, which is going to be good enough for the task that we're uh, using here in this example. You can see here that medium thinks quickly. That's the purpose of the medium model. The low model answers very quickly, so that's probably more suitable for simple tasks and where time is a constraint. You want to get things done quickly in there pretty easy to do, you can use low. If you're using um, Codex for complex tasks or a more complicated or extensive code base, then high might be a better option. Um, it thinks longer for better answers. Uh, so obviously it would take a bit longer to respond, but the quality of the answers is probably going to be a bit better. We'll stick with medium, as I said, but we might test um, high as well in the video if we get time. Okay, so we've got Codex open now in our sidebar. It looks like it doesn't support opening Codex as a separate standalone window like you can do with Claude Code, but this will be fine for now. It's, it's in our sidebar. If we need to flick across to our project directory, we can do that using the menu at the top here. We can also see at the bottom here there are three modes you can choose from. Uh, the first is chat or plan. The second is agent, and then the third is agent with full access. So the chat or plan mode is best used as essentially a coding assistant. So that mode will explain draft code, suggest changes, but it won't actually run anything or modify any files on its own. So if you're just using Codex for the first time, that's probably a good one to start with. If you just want to get to know how it works and what it can do without allowing it the capability to actually make changes and edits without permission. So um, that's probably what we'll start with here just for this demo. The second option is agent mode. Um, so in agent mode, Codex can act on the plan itself. So it can actually create and edit files and run small tasks. Usually it will still ask for confirmation before it makes any big changes, but anything small that it needs to do, it will just go ahead and, and implement those tasks on its own. Um, so if you want to do routine kind of code edits or, you know, scaffolding or sort of building boilerplates, 
Agent's a good mode to use there as well if you're comfortable with it being able to complete those tasks without um, asking for permission. So that's just going to save you time on repetitive edits and also skip some time that you would have to otherwise approve the uh, changes requested in the chat mode as you'll see. can still make mistakes though so that's the disclaimer if you're using agent mode. It's worth still reviewing the code and the changes that Codex makes because as I said it can make mistakes. The third mode is agent with full access. This gives Codex maximum control so you can run commands, edit multiple files, restructure projects. It's basically meant to act as a junior developer at the keyboard. So that's agent with full access. It's best for bigger refactors, scaffolding entire features or projects, automating workflows. And the pros of this is it's extremely powerful. So it's almost hands off. You can um, give it a guide to work on and let it run and implement all of those tasks. So you know, you might use chat or plan mode to work on the scaffold or the to-do list and then potentially go to agent with full access uh, to then let it implement the plan that you create in that planning mode. Um, the downside is that it is higher risk. So, you know, if agent with full access go, goes ahead and executes the entire to-do list or um, PRD that you provide, then there is the potential that it could make mistakes as we've discussed and with full access it's just going to go ahead and do everything so um, there's potential that it could cause some problems if it does make some mistakes and you've then got to go through the entire work that it's done to try and fix any errors and debug so um, those are the three options I would recommend potentially sort of trying to break down your project into smaller parts and therefore if you do use agent full access you can stop and review at certain stages to just check and make sure that it's done the work correctly. Um, probably not the best idea to just give it a massive project or a massive PRD to work on in one go because, as I said, if there's problems that get created, they, they're just going to compound over time if it's got a very big to-do list um, to work on. So it's better to chunk the project and you know have... A manual review at stages just to check to make sure it's working correctly so uh, those are the three modes you can choose from um, and as I said we'll start with the planning mode and ask it a few questions about the directory that we're in the directory that we're in at the moment is my website directory so I've created this as a next.js project and it's hosted by Vercel so what I can do here is use, in this example, Codex to build new landing pages for my website. Um, I can then test those uh, pages in Hot Reload because it's Next.js. And then once I'm happy with what it's built, we can use the Vercel commands to then push it to prod. So it's a really streamlined process for building new web pages um, and websites. What we'll do here is we'll we'll ask Codex a few questions to ensure that it understands the project that we're in and um, some of the tasks that we're about to ask it to work on. Before we jump in, this is actually the website and it's live right now. So the directory that we were just looking at, this is the front end result of that project. So we'll see that whatever changes we do make will affect this live website. So if you go to snapperai.io, you can see this. This is the website we're working on and that we're going to be um, making changes to in real time. Um, while I'm here, if you want to sign up for updates, you can do so here on the homepage, separai.io. I haven't sent out too many emails yet, but going to start a bit of a newsletter and keep everyone up to date with uh, some upcoming projects. So if you want to stay updated, you can sign up here. Um, you can see here we've got some content here already on the website. Um, a link to a few existing videos on the YouTube channel, a bit of information about what the website includes, um, another opt-in form, and then we've got standalone pages for some of the templates. So, for example, this one here is on how to create PRDs in 15 minutes with prompt templates with an opt-in form where you can 
uh, download the templates for free and, and just copy paste if you want to build a PRD. So that's an example of what the website looks like at the moment. You can see we've got links to social as well. Um, so what we'll do is we'll ask Codex to review the code base in Cursor. We'll see if it comes back with a accurate description on, on what this website is based on um, the front end interface that we can see here. Okay, so we're back in Cursor now. As you can see, we're using the Medium Codex model and we're in chat mode. So this is the planning mode and what we're going to do here is just have a conversation with Codex in this chat mode get an idea of what we actually want it to do and then we can switch to agent mode for the actual implementation. So again, chat and planning mode, it won't actually execute any tasks, write any code or run any commands, it's just going to help us plan and then when we switch to agent mode, that's when it will start to implement. So, so firstly what I did was I asked Codex to explain the project to me, so I wanted to test its understanding of the code base and you can see here its response was this repo is a marketing site built with Next.js. It lives under SRC app with three key client rendered landing pages, the main home page, the uh, character templates page and the PRD templates page. So those are the three pages we looked through just um, before. All three share a dark galaxy gradient visual theme defined in Tailwind and you reuse the same sticky header social links and convert kit subscription forms. Styling and layout rely on Tailwind plus a large bundle of uh, UI components under Components UI with utilities for class merging. There's also minor infrastructure for theme switching, bespoke SVG assets. Overall, Snapper AI website is a polished marketing funnel emphasizing downloadable templates and tutorials using Tailwind-driven design, embedded YouTube explainers, and mailing list capture to support AI agent developers. So... We can see here in planning mode, it has a really strong understanding of the code base and the project. So just from one prompt and its ability to review the project directory here in Cursor, it's been able to very clearly and accurately explain uh, what the website is. So its description here perfectly matches what we just ran through on the front end of, of how the website looks. For this test case, what we're going to do is just ask it to plan a landing page. It's going to be a basic test page. It'll just say test page built by Codex and have some other copy on the page. What we want it to do is hopefully build a plan that agent mode can then very quickly implement and hopefully it will also have the same design elements as our existing website. So I've prepared a prompt ahead of time and again I've actually had a conversation off to the side with ChatGPT to help write the prompt so what we can do now is copy paste that in and see what codex in planning mode comes back with um, so again as mentioned we've just asked it essentially to um, create a basic landing page that says test page built by codex and it should include a short descriptive paragraph underneath the heading that explains this is just a demo test page we want to use the same visual theme and design conventions as the rest of the site the existing site and we've then said in your response provide a step-by-step -step plan for creating this page note any dependencies highlight any potential pitfalls ask me any clarifying questions you need to ensure the plan is correct before we move to agent mode to implement it so I'll just expand this window a little bit we can see codex is thinking it's now writing out a plan It has asked me some questions. Do you want the page to use any existing layout component that other marketing pages rely on or should it just use Tailwind classes directly? Does the project enforce any metadata on new pages that we should include for cons consistency? Okay, so I'm just going to reply to the two questions it's asked. I'm going to say for this demo page, please use Tailwind classes directly. Don't add metadata. Keep it minimal. We'll see what it replies with. Yeah, so it's now revised the plan. So no further questions from my side, ready to implement when you are. So it's created the plan based off our initial prompt. When we do switch to agent mode, it's going to have the full conversation context, so it should be able to identify what text we want 
on the landing page, even though it hasn't specifically been mentioned in the revised plan. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll switch to agent mode and we'll ask it to now implement this landing page. Okay, so now that we've got our plan and we're happy with that, we can switch over to agent mode. I've now off to the side asked GPT-5 to help me with a prompt for agent mode. So this is going to instruct uh, agent mode now to implement the plan that we've created here in this conversation. As you can see here, please implement the plan we just created for the new test landing page. We've got instructions on what we want to build and then at the end it says when you're done, show me the full contents, list the imports you added, confirm how to preview the page. So we'll send that through to agent mode and again the distinction here is that we're in agent mode not agent with full access so it will ask for permission before it does make any changes whereas if we were in full access mode it would just go ahead and implement everything without asking for permission but as a sort of safety guardrail we will just do it in agent mode for this test to see exactly when it will ask us for permission um, so you can get an idea of what circumstances you'll need to potentially improve things that Codex wants to do if you are in this agent mode. So we can see here it's now requesting to run a command. It's essentially building the page here. We'll approve that. It now wants to make a new directory for the test page. Uh, more commands, just writing code here into the file and running a command. Okay, so it's finished working now. It was pretty quick. Um, it says it's added a standalone codex test landing page that mirrors the site's gradient theme and uses the button for a simple call to action. It's got the code here that it's used uh, for the page. It's mentioned the button import and it's now um, confirmed that we can preview at localhost by starting the dev server with npm run dev. So we'll do that now and we'll see uh, the landing page test version to see if it has created the page uh, in accordance with the plan that we initially created for it. Okay, so we've launched the landing page in dev mode and we can see that Codex has successfully executed the task as per the plan that we provided. So the theme matches the existing website. It's followed our instructions with the headline, which you can see here is test page built by Codex. It's included some other text as well as a button. So it has successfully followed instructions and executed the task in agent mode. So this was a pretty basic task that we gave Codex here, but we can see how effective it is to use for your coding and development projects. You can use those different modes for different tasks and switch in between within the same conversation uh, when you're ready to actually build. So that's a really um, cool feature that allows you to have the guardrails of not implementing anything when you're just planning and then switch over to agent mode when you're ready to build. So I hope you found this video useful as an introduction to how you can use Codex within Cursor. Uh, stay tuned because what I'm going to do on my next video is compare Codex to Claude Code. So I'm going to open up both Codex and Claude Code within Cursor, give them some tasks to do and compare the results and see which one performs better. So if you're interested in seeing that, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for that video next.